Hi, it's Michael Apache from Plan Academy coming at you with another great Primavera P6 training tutorial. We're out to train you on Primavera P6 and to help you understand all the internal workings of Oracle's project management software. Today we're going to be going in depth on Longest Path. Now, we have talked quite a bit on our blog and other videos about how in construction and in large industry projects, we should be looking at the longest path as our true critical path. The construction scheduling experts out there have told us this is the new standard and this is going to give us the more accurate, a more accurate view of our critical path. So we know now that when we're in Primavera, we can go into the schedule options and we can turn on the longest path option here, define critical activities as longest path. Great, go ahead and reschedule our project. Now, having done that, we want to look at the results. What is the longest path of the project? So with that, we'll go up here to the filters area and we'll turn on the longest path filter. We think we're done, there we go. Here's our longest path through the project, our most critical path. But I'm questioning right now whether this is in fact the longest path, what is being displayed. Let me show you a couple areas where we have some difficulties. First thing is, look at these activities here. These are level of effort activities. Now when we say longest path through the project, we really want the path where there are no delays between activities, where free flow between activities is really zero. And if we have level of effort activities in there, these are not true work activities, true driving work activities. You probably know that level of efforts are summary activities. So really, should level of efforts be in our longest path? No, they should not. So we have a problem there with the critical path longest path filter displaying level of effort activities. Now let's come down here and have a look at this area of the project right here. You can also see that we have some overlapping activities. And once again, we want in our longest path to show the longest path of continuous activities with no uh, overlapping or delays between them. So what is happening here? Why do we have overlapping activities? And I can see that there's a finish to finish relationship here. So again, we don't believe that these results should be showing up in the filter. So how do we get a true longest path out of Primavera? Well, I'm about to show you. Let's go back into our schedule options and let's go and check out the advanced tab. Now using this advanced feature of P6, the calculate multiple float paths, we can actually get a truer longest path the ones that filter out the problem issues that we just talked about. So if we turn this on and, and choose these options here, calculate multiple paths using free float and simply define the final activity in the project here, we can come up with a truer critical path. Now, why is it that I choose free float? Well, let me show you. If I flip over to the Primavera documentation, You'll see here it says free float. Choose this option to define critical float paths based on longest path. And that's what we're after in this case. We're gonna use the free float option here. Okay, having set that, let's go ahead and close this and go ahead and reschedule the project. Great, now when you're working with float paths, there are a couple things that we need to do. First thing, we're gonna add a couple extra columns. So I've added these extra columns. These are columns that are specific to float paths, float path and float path order. So I've added those two. Now, secondly, what we want to do is go back into our filters and simply turn off any filters that we might have on. Now, float path will have a value of one, two, three, four, five, and up to the number of float paths that we've generated. I did 10 but we really only want to look at the first one. So what we're gonna do is create a filter where we filter out all activities that have a value of one for float path. And I've got that filter built already. Here it is, although I've called it float path one to three. If we have a look at it, it just says float path is within the range of one to one, or you could set this to is equal to 
one. That works great. Okay, we'll turn that on. Now we're filtering on float path, where float path is equal to one. Now, first thing you want to notice is in our result, we no longer have longest path activities. Those guys are gone. Okay, and if I scroll this over a little bit so that you can see a little bit more of what's going on in the, the total float path, the critical path. Here we go. Really, it starts here. You're going to see that I no longer have overlapping activities. So I really have a true float path, a true critical path, a true longest path where the activities are totally contiguous one after the other. And that's my tip for you today. Use multiple float paths to get a true longest path out of Oracle Primavera. Hope this has been helpful. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you liked or didn't like about this video. And I hope to see you next time. Have a great day.